It's Sunday Run Day. It's day seven of the Body Shaping for Women Over 50 series. Let's go. All right, killer bees, let's go ahead and get moving and grooving. And that means that we're gonna start with some arm circles with high knees. Oh my goodness, how good does this feel? You guys, welcome to the workout. I'm Paula B. I'm your best middle-aged fitness friend, and I am a runner. I wanna start off with just a couple of quick notes. Just in case you did not watch day zero, I. I, maybe you did, maybe you didn't. In any event, okay, we are running today, or rather, I am running today, and I have some notes for you about that. If you don't wanna run, don't run. <laughs> it is never a requirement, ever, ever, ever. I do have these programmed in for Sunday run day, just so that we get a chance to really chat about stuff. I. I talk all the time. You already have noticed that if you are on day seven here. But I really like to be able to kind of hold one thread of conversation. And if I'm trying to explain the exercises and cue everything and think about timing and everything else, then it gets complicated for me personally. You are absolutely welcome. I've got the timer here set for 30 second intervals. You are totally welcome to treat today as like a moderate cardio day. And that's the thing about me being a runner this is moderate for me. This is not like a push day. It's not especially difficult. I've been doing this for years and years and years. Let's go ahead and do some arm crossers with booty kickers. So for me, this kind of work is moderate. If it doesn't feel moderate to you, especially with the 30 second intervals going back and forth between walking and running, help yourself to doing more walking or as previously mentioned, doing some other kind of something that feels nice and moderate for you. The other thing that I will tell you is if you are not used to running without shoes or walking without shoes, please put on shoes. Please do. Again, this is something that I have been doing for years and years and years. And working out barefoot is simply a preference for me. It's something that I enjoy. It feels good to me. I have tons of practice. If you have never run barefoot before and you go right into this workout, this is going to be tough. This is actually going to be really hard on your body and it'll probably be very, very sore in your calves, especially tomorrow. And because, again, today is supposed to be a moderate day, I don't want you to go into tomorrow's push day <laughs> feeling sore. Let's go ahead and do some welcome to my homes because welcome to my home, you guys. I love Sunday run day. I was thinking about this while I was setting this up. I could actually talk about running, like how to get started running and what to do with running all day long, literally all day long. And I'm hoping, I'm hoping that some of you doing this body shaping series find that you actually really do enjoy running and that it's something that you would like to add to your repertoire. Others of you will never run and that's totally okay too. I want you to know though really specifically regarding this particular workout, this isn't, uh, <laughs> I, I had the 30 second intervals still set on my timer from yesterday. <laughs> I just kept them. <laughs> I, didn't, I just didn't even bother to put on something else. So it's, it's not like there was some grand scheme of, we're gonna learn how to run this month. No, not at all. I'm just a little bit too lazy to change my timer. And in fact, I need to check and make sure that that is what I have. Okay, it is still set for 30 second intervals. <laughs> I, sometimes my kids do workouts. I didn't change the gym boss, but somebody else in my house might have. So let's go ahead and get moving and grooving. You are welcome, as previously mentioned, to walk and run, to walk and do something else, to entirely do something else. Whatever it is, honestly, the biggest part of today is this conversation. And I wanted to talk to you about how are you? We're a week in, my friends. I feel amazing. I also feel like this is a little bit different. I don't know if you know anything about my personal story. I have just finished coming off of several months, I'm trying to do the math on this, like six months of weight loss. And, and I will tell you that it, it didn't actually need to take me six months to lose weight. It just did take me six months to lose weight because I really, I didn't have something else really specific to go towards before this program. I knew this was coming. So I just spent six months, actually I guess it was five months. I spent five months losing about 10 pounds. So I have just come off of weight loss and I think 
If I had to guess, I would say that quite a few of you have just finished losing weight also. And that's where a lot of today's conversation really is going to go with some of the differences in your mindset and just your physical body and your physical work and the practicality of eating this way and working this way and, and really everything that we're doing, how, how different it is from weight loss. I'm noticing it myself. That's the great thing about going through this in real time with you guys is that I'm feeling not... I'm not feeling bad in any manner, but I'm feeling the difference between losing weight, where I was doing something very moderate every single day, I was doing the same things every day, I was eating the same things every day, into this new world of thinking about what's coming tomorrow. I mean, plan for tomorrow. You already have heard me say that numerous times. Planning for tomorrow, thinking about what I'm going to eat, thinking about what I'm going to do, thinking about how I'm going to feel, thinking about how I'm going to recover. It is a very, even though I always, I've always planned for tomorrow. Like even when I was losing weight, I was planning for tomorrow. It's just that tomorrow was exactly the same as today. So it was really easy, but thinking ahead, to what I'm going to do tomorrow and what I'm going to need to do to fuel that has been a real turn in my mind. And so I wanted to kind of check in with you and see how you're, how you're faring with that because it is so different. Now, if you have long since maintained your weight and this is just a new and interesting program for you, then a lot of what I'm going to say, I mean, really a lot of what I'm going to say during this whole series might not totally apply to you, except if you are aiming for like a really new result in a really new way. Just because you haven't been losing weight, it doesn't necessarily mean that you've been aiming for some kind of fitness goal, like maybe you are now with this body shaping program. So when we're talking about changing your routine, that does still apply to you, no matter what you have just finished doing. This is, this is kind of new and different. And really specifically for my just coming off of weight loss bees, I wanted to talk to you about what this first week might have brought to you on the scale because I know for a fact, I'm recording this before the series even launches, but I know for a fact that some of you probably saw a gain on the scale this week and are probably freaking out and wondering, okay, is this, is this what's going to happen with a body shaping program? Or might be telling yourself something like, well, muscle weighs more than fat. And so therefore when I'm working on muscle, the scale needs to go up. All those kinds of things that we kind of wonder when we're starting something new. And I want to tell you a couple of things really specifically. Number one, this is one of my favorite things to talk about. Muscle does not weigh more than fat. <laughs> it is a question that I get all the time. Actually, no, it's not even a question. It is a statement that I get or hear all the time that is simply not true. And I just want to really make sure that you understand that a pound is a pound. A pound on the scale is always a pound. And parsing out whether or not it's a pound of fat or a pound of muscle is kind of kind of useless on a small term scale. Over the course of one week, your body changes uh, every, every minute. I mean, truly, your body fluctuates all the time. You take in water, you eliminate waste, you have inflammation, you sleep well, you drink. All the different things that you are doing, all of the different processes that your body is going through because of all the different input. Your weight is going to fluctuate anyway. And I'm assuming if you followed my weight loss program that, that you already have gotten used to that, that you understand that sometimes it goes up, sometimes it goes down. You're looking for a downward trend when you're losing weight. When you are maintaining your weight, the likelihood of you maintaining one specific number on the scale is like almost zero, honestly. I generally recommend that you look to maintain within a range. I give myself 
like three to five pounds. Five pounds is kind of on the outside of it, but I have like a three pound window where if I'm any one of those three pounds, I know that I'm maintaining, that I am really good, that everything that I'm doing with my program is exactly where I want to be. I'm going to encourage you to have a window. Three to five pounds is pretty reasonable. You might, depending on your personal fluctuations that you have noticed, you might need a bigger window. Totally okay. I, <laughs> over the course of, of many years, and I, this is this is a program for women, so I'm going to go ahead and talk about our periods. Over the course of many years, I have learned that my three to five pounds is totally doable most of the month and then and then there's about a week where the three to five pounds changes and goes up like three to five pounds that's still a window and it's still what i consider normal and natural for me i'm going to encourage you whether you are cycling or not to just pay attention to your body that is that is honestly one of the biggest things that we are doing during this month-long series is we're learning how to take in data, take in information, and make what of it what we need to. Some things on a short-term scale aren't worth thinking about, aren't worth worrying about. Some things really need a lot more time before you're going to notice differences. And that is what I'm gonna tell you about this first week. This first week, if this is the first time that you have really pushed yourself and you have really lifted heavier weights than, than what you would normally consider like a daily kind of a workout, this work probably pushed you to your max. I'm just gonna guess that push day, even with recovery followed by moderate work, that push day might have showed up on the scale. What happens when we push? When we, when we go outside our limits, the first thing that our body does is send inflammation out. <laughs> it says, holy moly, something crazy happened here. Let's, let's do what we gotta do. It's like the trauma team. It comes on out. It's inflammation that kind of goes throughout your body. You might feel a little puffy in your hands. You might feel almost bloated. You might feel inflamed. You're retaining some water because of that. And there's a lot of other processes going on that frankly, I don't understand well enough to explain to you. Here's what I know about inflammation though. Inflammation is the first line of defense that your body sends out when you have pushed it beyond its normal limits. What happens next is your body clears that inflammation and then gets stronger. Clearing the inflammation does require some estrogen, which is why we're very careful about how much we push, but also your muscles have their own process that I, again, I'm not, I don't understand it well enough to explain it well enough, that your muscles repair themselves from an intense effort and they get stronger. Your body has biological processes for everything and it's got a couple of imperative things that it needs to do. Number one, your body always wants to stay alive. So that's why your body sends out and creates processes for a lot of the different things that it does. It simply wants to stay alive. The other thing that your body wants to do is stay the same as much as possible. So when you do something very different to your body, it's why your body kind of freaks out a little bit at first, like, whoa, 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 what's going on here? But then the third biological imperative is that your body will adapt when necessary so that it can stay the same. So when you have a push day and you push your body beyond its limits, your body freaks out because that's what it does. And then it gets a little bit stronger so that next time, or, or soon, probably not the exact next time, over time, it gets stronger so that that exact same amount of intensity becomes doable, becomes the new norm. That is what your body is going through right now. Your body could possibly still be in the freak out stage. And here's the thing about knowing that we're having another push day tomorrow. 
I want you to pay attention to exactly how much pushing you can do. Over the course of this month, take some notes. Pay attention to how you feel. You are capable of pushing beyond what your body might be capable of repairing and recovering from. Knowing where your line is, is part of what we're doing this month. Even though I'm saying something on screen like, let's go with our heaviest weights here, I want you to understand and be responsible for choosing the exact right amount of heavy, the exact right amount of recovery, the exact right amount of moderate. Maybe, maybe your moderate actually needs to come down to even more moderate than it was before, whenever you were moderating before. Or, if you're not familiar with moderation, maybe you need to really moderate at all. Paying attention to how each individual workout feels and how the program feels overall is a huge part of what we're doing. Paying attention, honestly, is, is what we're doing. <laughs> like this is the work for you for the rest of your life. In order to get the results that you want, rather than simply blindly following along and saying, oh, well, Paula's picking up 10 pound weights, so I'm gonna pick up 10 pound weights. Pay attention to what your body is capable of and feel empowered with the knowledge that you can make anything happen. That is, that is, why, that is why I have these, these talking videos, you guys. I am endlessly fascinated by the human body and what it can do and what we're capable of and how we get results and what we need to do and how we need to rest and recover and all the different things. And I share that with you so that you can make great decisions for yourself. Because when it comes down to it, we are all an experiment of one. We are all doing our own thing and our own body is reacting the way bodies react, but also in a really individual manner. I can give you this program, and I have, <laughs> and I highly encourage you to open up the description box below when you're on mobile or desktop so that you can get all the information in my ebook. It's totally free, it's available to you. You can read it, you can peruse it, you can listen to these videos, you can listen while you're running or walking or doing whatever. The information is here for you so that you can use it so that you can get the most amazing results for yourself. Because here's the other thing that might be going on with you. I notice in my own self, after years of being fit, that I, I started to wonder if I wasn't really in control of my body anymore. When I started going through menopause, at the, the same time as a lot of other things happened, the perimenopause really kind of socked me in the heart at almost the exact same time as both of my kids suddenly became adults and went away to college and then subsequently came home from college, right about the same time that my sister died and right about the same time that I, because my kids were older, I was pushing myself for a variety of reasons, <laughs> many of which were ego related, but I was pushing myself physically harder than I had ever pushed before. I was running ultra, ultra marathons. I was trying to do my running and this and take care of my family and just everything. I literally ran myself ragged and I gained weight from it. I mean, it, quick backstory, if you don't know Part of why we gain weight in menopause is because our metabolism, our metabolism changes, our estrogen changes, and what happens is that rather than eating less and moving more, being the thing that moves the scale, doing whatever we've been doing, <laughs> eating however we've been eating, sometimes ends up being too much work, too little fuel, and then our body goes into panic and f stores fat. It is, it is a very natural process 
that I was unprepared for. I started feeling, as maybe you did too, when you first started going through menopause or things first started changing for you, that, that I wasn't in control of my body anymore. And I really worried about that. I mean, as an athlete, as a fitness instructor, I felt flummoxed by suddenly gaining weight from exercising the way I'd always been exercising. Like, what was that? So I did what many of us do and I continued doing it. <laughs> I understood that I needed to make changes, but I really didn't know what the changes were and I really didn't want to change. I mean, honestly, it was mental. I didn't want to change. I wanted to be able to run as much as I wanted to run. I wanted to be able to push myself as hard as I'd always pushed myself. It was, it was 100% mindset as far as I'm concerned. But so then when I understood physically, I was empowered with the knowledge of this is how I can lose weight, this is how I can take care of it. I lost weight. Um, last, was that just last year? It was, it was 2019. I lost about 10 pounds. I felt amazing. And then immediately, cannot stress this enough, immediately upon seeing the number that I wanted to see on the scale, went right back to doing everything that I had been doing that caused me to gain weight. <laughs> You guys, this story is hilarious to me in hindsight. At the time, I was like, but I lost weight, I should be fine. <laughs> I was not fine. I put on that same 10 pounds that I had just lost. <sighs> and here's the thing, I understand how that can feel. Like, you know, I when you lose weight, it feels, like maybe you won't be able to hang on to it. Like maybe you won't be able to keep it. And that is exactly what I'm gonna tell you is that you won't if you go right back to doing what you were doing before. It's why we're paying attention. It's why I personally am really paying attention to this program. I know, I know that this method of training works. This method of training, 100%, hands down, the way your body works. How is it gonna work for me personally? I'm figuring that out right alongside of you. Right now, my weight is up by one pound. Right now, I'm paying attention, knowing that we're coming into tomorrow's push day, I'm paying attention to how I'm fueling, how I'm feeling, and really specifically, what I'm telling myself. I'm telling myself that this is an experiment that I know exactly how to change my body. I mean, if nothing else, I have gained and lost 10 pounds twice in the last year and a half. <laughs> like, like I, were, well, I mean, over the course of the last three years total. I mean, I know how to do it. <laughs> I know exactly how to change my body. It's really a matter of how to change my body specifically. And that's what I want to give to you. This is my gift to you. The knowledge that you can change your body, but you're not gonna be able to change your body by simply doing what I do or doing what I say. You're gonna have to pay attention. You're gonna have to know the knowledge of, okay, this is, this is how muscles work, this is how inflammation works, this is how estrogen works. I mean, again, you don't have to be a scientist. You can, you can give, or you can take the information that I have given you. It's, it's, <laughs> it's very simplified, but it is how your body works. And then you can pay attention and make it work for you. Maybe, Maybe your push day isn't so pushy. Maybe your push day is even pushier. Maybe your moderate days need to be more moderate. Maybe they can be less moderate. Maybe your Sunday run day is a Sunday walk day. <laughs> maybe, maybe your recovery is even more recovery e e. <laughs> when you when you feel really confident in your knowledge and in your ability to change your body, you'll be able to change your body however you want. Honestly, truly, hands down. Your body is a biological specimen. It is capable of change. It is supposed to change in certain ways, really reliably, even though it doesn't feel reliable. 
If you are in the middle of menopause like I am and it is making changes that don't feel reliable right now, you still, I mean, you knew this was coming. <laughs> menopause comes for us all eventually. This, this process is always part of the plan. Paying attention and making your own plan is how you can create whatever body you want at any time, at any age, for any reason. I know, you guys, it's a lot. It's a lot to think about. Now here's the thing. We're gonna run one more time and then we're gonna do a couple of intervals. I'm gonna do a couple of <laughs> intervals of walking to kind of cool down and then we're gonna actually like cool down and do a little bit of cool down stretching. This, this information is the thing that's gonna get you where you wanna go. It's why I've included this in our program. Now here's the other thing that I realized I didn't explain last week. <laughs> I've thought about this numerous times and this is just like kind of a throwaway little piece of knowledge, but here's the thing. I've mentioned to you that this is a 29 day series and I think that for some of you it might be like, well why isn't it the whole month and why did it start on a Sunday with day zero and, and just super quickly I wanted to explain to you that because we have a routine each week, it made so much more sense to me and therefore I'm assuming to you to have 28 days where we start on a Monday with day one, the push day, and then we're going to finish at the very end of the month, or not quite the very end of the month, with day 28, which is going to be our final Sunday run day. Then, because this is super repeatable, you start again on Monday with the push day again. Because the month, like, you know, from the first of the month to the whatever, there's 30 days and 30 days, half September, and whatever other months have 30 days. I actually always do the knuckles. You saw me trying to do the knuckle thing. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off now. I was trying to do the knuckle thing because that's how I usually remember all the months of the year. Let's go ahead and do some arm circles. You guys, you've learned a lot about me today. <laughs> But here's the thing, I want you to be able to repeat this program as often as you want to. This is super, super, super repeatable for as many months as it takes to get the results that you are looking for or to get the knowledge that you're looking for, to really pay attention and take notes and see, okay, how much can I push? How much do I need to moderate? What do I need to do here that's gonna make this program work for me? If this, if this first month ends up being basically a science experiment <laughs> where you don't quite get the results that you're looking for, but you make some headway and you figure some things out, as far as I'm concerned, that is a huge, huge, huge success. Everything that you do that gets you even infinitesimally closer to where you want to be is a success. For me personally, this, this learning curve I'm assuming it's gonna take me a while. It always does. <laughs> this is something I know about myself. It just takes me a while to figure things out. And then once I do, I've got it. I hope that you feel that way too. Let's go ahead and do some arm openers. <sighs> Open ourselves up to the possibilities. <sighs> and then close them up. Give yourself a big hug and a pat on the back. I hope that you had a fun time today, whether you were running or walking or doing whatever else you were doing. I hope that today, I hope that today empowered you, honestly. I hope that today helped you feel like your mind is in the right place, your body is in the right place, that you are heading in the right direction and that everything, everything is gonna turn out like you want it to, my friends. Have a fantastic day and I'm gonna see you tomorrow. Tomorrow is push day, so make sure you fuel for it. Plan for tomorrow. And make sure you click that subscribe button so that I can see you tomorrow.